Good morning. My name is Michiel van Vliet of AT Systemas. You might have heard about the announcement from Atlassian about the end of support of their server line of products. The real end of life for server is foreseen for the beginning of 2024, so in theory there is no rush. However, some changes will already be in effect on February 1, 2021, so we thought we'd bring you some clarity. So let's see what some of the fundamental dates of these changes are that will start in February 2021. There are two dates you should consider as a reference. February 2nd, 2021, which is the date on which Atlassian will stop selling server product licenses, and subsequently, February 2nd of the following years until 2024. On February 2nd, 2024, Atlassian will end all product maintenance activities for the server product. This means that the license will continue to be valid because, as written in the license agreement itself, it's a perpetual lifetime license. So the server product will continue to work, but no more bug fixes will be released. Atlassian will no longer be providing support and security patches will no longer be released. Remember that Atlassian currently supports three product lines. Server, that is the classic on-prem version that progressively will no longer be supported. Data center, which is designed for large customers with large installations, large cluster instances, supported by high availability policies. And finally, the cloud version, which is a software as a service version. And the idea of Atlassian is that most of its customers will not continue to use the server version, but switch to one of the other two product lines. In between these two milestones of February 2nd, 2021, and February 2nd, 2024, there are some stages that could progressively facilitate the transition path, but should also encourage people to make conscious analysis of what their future options are. At the same time as the end of the license sale plan for February 2021, the active development of all Atlassian products for the server line will be stopped. So there will no longer be any development of new features for Jira software, Confluence, Service Desk, Bitbucket, and also for all marketplace applications that Atlassian owns, like, for example, Portfolio for Jira, which is now officially called Advanced Roadmaps, Insights, Team Calendar, and others. The exceptions are two products that are widely used in the developer world, FishEye and Crucible. These products are not affected by the end of support. They have been passed to a stage called basic maintenance, and they are considered mature products with a slower evolution and a different life cycle. Let's return to all the products that will be affected by this change. As of February 2022, the possibility of upgrading and downgrading existing installations will end. So until February 2021, you can purchase licenses for new installations. After February 2021, it will be possible to renew licenses and even propose upgrades and downgrades. For example, in, if in October 2021, I would want to grow from 100 to 200 Confluence users, for example, I can certainly do so. And if in November, I want to reduce my Jira licenses from 150 to 100, I can do that as well. However, after February 1, 2022, that will no longer be possible. Finally, on February 1, 2023, Atlassian will also end the sale of third-party software for the on-premise server version. Examples are products like Project Configurator, Configuration Manager, Script Runner, etc. After that date, your instance will be frozen in the state in which it is at that moment in time. Why these different timelines? This is because Atlassian has full control over their own product lines, but it must also give third-party vendors time to adapt to new needs. In addition, Atlassian is putting in place a strong incentive mechanisms, mechanism, both positive and negative, via pricing and discounting. One of these mechanisms is the fact that the prices of the server licenses, but also data licenses, will increase as early as February 2nd, 2021. And these are pretty steep increases, as you can see on this slide. Conversely, for customers who already have a site server license and are ready to move to the cloud or a data center, Atlassian has created generous discount policies. Um, and these policies, these discounts range up to 55%, for example, as you can see here. So the overall Atlassian strategy is pretty clear. The earlier you migrate, the better. But now you also have to understand what it means to migrate because not all products are the same. It's not just a matter of differences, licensing and pricing. There are differences in terms of functionality. Data center is similar to server as it represents another type of on-premise installation, but it supports additional features such as high availability, clustering, and load balancing, for example. Cloud, however, is a substantially different product. It's not just software as a service. It has different functionality and a different product and integration design logic. However, Atlassian is investing a lot of money to close the gaps that exist between cloud and the on-premise data center version. At a certain moment in the future, we, we expect Atlassian to reach a tipping point similar to what other software vendors have done, 
where the newest functionality will be first delivered in the cloud before it reaches the on-prem versions. Currently, however, there are some limitations to the cloud version. For example, the number of supported users is limited to 10,000 to guarantee a certain level of performance. However, there will be very few customers that need more than 10,000 users. Some apps are not available as cloud versions yet, uh, or are available with less functionality, uh, which might not fulfill your current needs. Custom development will be more limited, and there are, of course, issues related with data residency. In the cloud, you do not have 100% control for your data resides. In Europe, Atlassian uses data centers in Ireland and Germany. And think of things like Brexit, which is just around the corner, or the July 2020 sentence by the Court of Justice of the European Union on the validity of the uh, EU standard contextual clauses. Currently, Atlassian offers data residency for products with enterprise plans. You can choose to house certain products data, product data in Europe or in the United States. For other Atlassian products, the situation can be different. Most of the Atlassian products are running on the AWS cloud, but are still hosted with other vendors in one single region. Um, if you want to know more, just Google the sentence, where does Atlassian store data or ask us directly. But the question you, of course, have is what, what should you do? At APC statements, Sistemas, our advice is to orient yourself toward the cloud products unless you have very specific needs. Why is that? Well, data center is intended to be a niche product line for customers with many users. We're talking about customers with 500, 1,000, 5,000, up to 10,000 users, and it's also the most expensive product. Furthermore, Atlassian has made it very clear that cloud is the future for them. So if you are ready to move to the cloud using a SaaS solution and to decommission server now, you should start planning your move, taking into account the incentives and the limitation that Atlassian is putting in place around server. If you are not ready now, you have to ask yourself if you will be ready in 2024. If the answer is yes, you should reevaluate every year when to move to the cloud. And if you are ready, you should move when as soon as you can to take advantage of some of these aggressive discounts. If the cloud SaaS solution does not work for you because you have specific needs around data access or data control or data residency, you should already think to start moving to data center. Now, how can we help you in this process? For us, the idea of migrating your Atlassian stack is not something that just appears now with the announcement of the end of support of server. It's something we've done for a long time for our customers who for one reason or another, like wanting a cluster platform or the desire to move to third party pass solution, or because they, they really wanted to move to a SaaS cloud solution, have asked for our help in migrating, uh, migrating their, their environments. Here you can see some of those references, like for example, Carrefour, Carglass, or the Spanish government. You can also see that we have experience moving to the Atlassian SaaS and PaaS cloud, but also moving to a data center solution running either in Amazon's or Microsoft cloud. This has helped us better understand the possibilities and limitations of each of these platforms and helped us to refine our migration methodologies. And here you can see some additional references from other customers. The message we want to give here really is, hey, we have already done a lot of migrations and we know how to do this very well. What we would like to propose to you is an assessment session where you look at the S is and 2B situation. In the S is we look at things like pros and cons of cloud, the different versions versus data center, which products to migrate, what purchase marketplace apps you have and their availability support for cloud and data center environments what custom developments and integration with other tools you have, what user requirements, storage requirements, security and compliance requirements, and what data residency needs you have. In the 2B situation, we'll work with you on possible scenarios and we will deliver a comp comprehensive report with recommendation of the option that best suits your needs, including infrastructure estimates, an order of cost magnitude in the case of data center, an order of magnitude of cost of migration, licensing, et cetera. As I said before, we have a wealth of experience with all different kinds of blessing migrations. We have defined the methodology and codified the steps and IP necessary to do a successful migration. These steps are different, of course, based on the applicable scenario. One such scenario you see here is to move from server to the Atlassian cloud, which has you know, specific steps. Uh, another scenario is move to a server instance to a single node data center instance, which is probably the most simple migration. Uh, the differences with server are not that relevant and the migration is easy and you, 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 get, you take advantage of all the additional functionality in, in data center. And yet uh, another scenario is moving data center to data center with a, with a clustered solution, which has some additional requirements. And in addition, 
as you've already seen in the references, we have uh, presented before, we have extensive experience with deployment on Atlassian uh, data center on Azure or AWS. For these situations, we have materials and methodology to facilitate things like platform positioning, configuration, parameterization of Atlassian in production environments, set up, uh, set up of backup policies, monitoring with different tools like Azure Application Gateways or CloudWatch from uh, Amazon, uh, and we have pre-created operating manuals. Now, let me talk a bit about our company, Ate Sistemas. Ate Sistemas is a company based in Spain with offices in Italy and Portugal. We have 1,500 employees and 25 history in technology consulting. We are an Atlassian Platinum partner with one of the largest teams dedicated to Atlassian Stack in Southern Europe, with over 100 specialists ranging from specialist consultants to developers to system architects. We are proud to have more than 60 ACPs or Atlassian official certifications, and we have been an Atlassian partner for more than eight years now, and we have under 200 light cost, over 200 live customers on the Atlassian stack. Now, to our services. So our services include the entire IT lifecycle, from consulting on business and IT processes, advising on ALM solutions, to installation, custom development, training, change management, infrastructure, support, maintenance, and license management. We not only manage our licenses, but as a high volume platinum partner, we also obtain additional discounts that we apply uh, for our customer directly. A lot of customers don't realize this, but in most cases, it's cheaper to buy via a partner than to buy directly from Atlassian. So this has been a very short and high level overview of the licensing and product changes at Atlassian and your future options and scenarios. If you have any further questions, please contact me directly or contact our marketing department, and we are happy to get the right people in front of you and to jump on a call or video conference to see how we can help you. Thank you very much and enjoy your day.